What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, representing the squad, baby. And uh, we went undefeated with the Zephyrus. Oh man, this deck is just so lit. I fell in love with it. Uh, so we piloted it on um, last Monday, which was just yesterday at DNA. And uh, we went undefeated through five rounds, made it through top eight and top four, and got first place. Took zero L's. Uh, we played uh, two True Dracos Pures, one True Draco Invoked. We played one Pure Lightsworn, one Lightsworn ABC Dino, and one Pendulum Magician deck, um, which, you know, that was probably the um, the highlight of the day because that was one of the matches where this deck shined the most. When I realized that the mirror matches are not as complicated as most would think. And when I say mirror match, I mean a Pendulum mirror match. Like, this deck just inherently beats all the other Pendulum decks. And uh, it just doesn't struggle against anti spell and D barrier like most would think. So, let's hop into this main deck. I'm really impressed with this deck. I've fallen for it. This is definitely what I'm taking this Saturday at Lubbock Regionals coming up in like maybe four or five days. So the main deck starts as follows. Threes of Wrath. This guy is my anger translator. Everything that I want to say but can't say, he says it for me and he can get away with it because he's just a Yu-Gi-Oh card. You can't punish him. He's really, really strong. He's my favorite scale. He has zero restrictions and I want to see this card every first turn. His artwork is sick. He's just a beautiful card. Pin on summon twice. 3450 beater. Nothing bad about this card. 3 Zephyr Nui, he is your lifeblood, bro. You have to get this card every first turn. You need to search your engine. You need to have that inherit plus two, meaning he searches when you pendulum summon him and searches on your opponent's turn when you pop him with your nine pillars. That's an inherit plus two. So you get a lot of value at this card. And at the same time, while you're getting that plus two, your opponent takes a minus one because he always gets you a negate, which means this card says, I get two cards and you lose one, which is like a plus three when you add it up in card economy. This card's insane. He's a 26 booty. Even when you're playing going second, he allows you to disrupt boards. He's just, <laughs> I suck at my feet to laugh, but he's just so good, man. Zephrath and him are like the MVPs. They're the only Zephras that I play at three. Absolutely. Then we have my Sotelo Knights, which allow me to play going second through boards. He helped me in my stun matchup. It was like Inspector Border, uh, Fossil Dyna, Thunder King kind of like stun deck. He won me that duel, game one and game two. He, oof, boy, I'm so glad that I'm playing him. He pops any sets, like literally. I popped a set um, Fossil Dyna, and I was like, oh, snap. If I would have ran into this and he flipped, he would have killed my whole board. I was like, this guy is just mm, so saucy. And then one Zephyr Thuban, he's just like your Dryden for any face-ups. Um, so these cards are more powerful going second, which helps you out a lot. And they're level fours, which, you know, if you play rank fours, they help you to go into them. Then one's a Fraxy and one's a for Wendy. Zephyr Wendy helps out a lot when you're like mid to late game. All your resources are in your extra deck because of Zephrath. And you're like, dang, I need to get them back. So you just normal her, add one. Then you can pin them some one from deck and then one from hand and whatever else you have. Uh, so she's really strong. And having these two helps you to make a lot of your um, level six synchros that are always going to have their effects protected by Oracle of Zephra, which is just really important to keep in mind. Uh, so just your tan Zephras. One of the MVPs is Zephraxy. Um, naturally, you're supposed to play more than one of this card, but one has just been doing very fine for me. And um, I've just been using this crap like so much. Always putting it at the bottom of the deck, searching it out again. It's just, to me, like it's just like, wow, Like why, why would I play more than this card? I've never had an issue where I needed more than one. Uh, I never banish it off Divine Strike. And naturally, the only cards that I banish off Divine Strike are actually just these. I always want to keep my one ups because they come up multiple times throughout the duel. So just playing it smart, I'll banish as a Frath as a Franu off my Divine Strike instead. Then for your kind of like your generic Electrum Turbo cards, you play three copies of Astrograph and three Chronograph. Chronograph overperformed for me in my all of my Draco matchups because he enabled me to just use Electrum to turn Electrum into a one card Borlo combo, which allowed me to still draw a card while making Borlo. Uh, it's just really strong. Like you just. Electrum this, bring this out, special from hand, and then draw a card from Chain Link 1. Um, so really strong. Uh, make sure Naritos, make your rank 6s, make sure um, your Supreme King engine. Oof, like just, Chrono has been just over, like he's been outshining Astrograph. I'm not knocking Astrograph because this card is obviously retarded. Uh, he searches everything, but when you're under pressure, when you're about to get OTK, he saves your life because he cock blocks. And then when you're trying to make bigger pushes, he helps you a lot. Astrograph is just one of those cards that allows you to add extra resources that you've lost. And he's just like a 25 beater, right? But Chronograph to me helps going first and second to overcommit or overextend if you need to. If you're all in and you're playing in time, like in this like turn one, two, three, four, five. And you're like, dang, this is my last turn. Why not go all out, right? This card helps you to go all out. 
And also, when your opponent's trying to attack you for game, they hit a monster, you special him, bring out another one. And if they're too big for them, then they have to stop, like, especially against Trickstar. So, uh, these are just, woo, so broken. But lately, Chronograph has been, like, looking better than Astrograph. But I don't knock either one. They're, they're just broken. Both of them are. Then you play three Cerberus and two Jackal King. For going first, this gives you more negates than you're supposed to have. Undeservedly, right? And going second, this card is just what you want. So, this engine is so flexible and versatile, like the Astro and Chrono, because they allow you to play through boards going second, and they allow you to establish a better board going first. So when I cut any of these cards, absolutely not. Like, why would I not play the Mythical Beast engine? The Mythical Beast engine is just retarded, dude. Then you have two Supreme King Dark Worm, and then you have two Gate Zero, which I'm calling the Donut now, just like Wrath is my anger translator. Um, these engines are all just necessary for me. There are so many games where I realize, like, multiples of this comes up and multiples of this come up so i play two and two perfect ratio right you don't want to play three of this card because i feel like if you open with more than one it's bad and at the same time you never really want to open with this too often i just play two because it comes up for me in play testing where i'm like dang i could use another dark worm because you're like all right you foolish for one your board gets broken and you have like a dragon trine you're like dang if i could dragon trine for the second dark worm and at the second donut this would be really really strong right now especially for a game when i actually dragon trine dumped him special him did normal summon Ghost Ogre and Black Rose an entire true Draco player's field. And that won me the duel because I pendulum summoned after that. Searched too many counter traps and he had nothing left. He has committed every card to his board. Uh, <laughs> sauce, man. Let me get that freeze left. <laughs> oh. And then one as we play Performer Call out I Synchron. This card should be banned. And your Stargazer and your Time Gazer. Um, which naturally you would brick, but in this deck, four scales don't even hurt because you rarely ever pendulum summon for four. Like only time you pendulum summon for four is when you're bringing out one, two, or you know these. But naturally, you're always pendulum summoning for level six or higher. So four scales help. It's almost like odd eyes. You just need a four scale and a higher scale, right? So four scales, seven scale is still really, really good. So like you draw these, they're just scales, and they also could be extra cards to pop off Electrum. So do you brick with these? Nah, not really. Even when you do draw them, but you barely ever draw them. So I feel like every card in this deck is powerful, and this deck rarely ever breaks. The one hand I thought was a break in my matchup, I actually drew too many traps. I still won that duel because I had too much disruption for that player. Two Ash Blossom, uh, two Ogres, and one Drone Lockbird, and one Destrudo. These are your non penal monsters. Obviously, your hand traps are important because hand traps just win you so many duels that you're not supposed to win. Going second against FTK decks, you have these Farf cards to answer them. Uh, going second against an established anti-spell or a D-barrier calling Pendulums. Destrudo just says Black Rose, kill your field. Uh, and he just says Yazi, pop, play through your negates, right? Droll rapes the Pendulum Magician matchup sometimes, but he always rapes the True Draco matchup. He always rapes the Invoke matchup. He always rapes the Trickstar matchup. He always, always savages Rogue. Like, it, it just... It's so it's it's incorrect to not play at least one draw. And the reason why you can get away playing one is because Zephras, believe it or not, can search any monster from your deck to your hand. You can add any monster. It doesn't matter what level of restriction. Shh, don't tell anybody. So you play your two ash, your two ogre, and your one draw. Perfect for me. Your your ash and ogre are not only searchable by your, your combo with Charge Warrior, but they're recyclable with um Ptolemy M7, and they're searchable through Chao Fang. So you have too many ways to get these cards. You should never, ever be complaining saying that you you never saw them. Because if you never saw them, you just weren't playing right. Then for your spells, you play uh, three of your negator. Um, basically, this card is a negator because I always use it to search my negates. Excuse me, guys. Like Every time I use this, I'm searching Zephyr Divine Strike or Zephyr Ward. And if I don't have um, Zephyr Wrath and I feel like I can't make Electrum, then I use this to search my of Wrath, right? But naturally, I open up really strong, so I always, always, always use this to search my trap. There are some times in, you know, different situations where you search the field spell if you don't have a terraforming or a uh, oracle because you're trying to black rose your opponent, putting black rose as chain link one and your field spell as chain link two so that they, they can't negate the black rose and their field gets broken. And then you just, you know, protect them. Like you protect whatever Zephyrs will be destroyed. Uh, so see, three Zephyr Providence. Then for your field spell, three Oracle of Zephra and two Optimus Prime to search out your field spell. I bumped it up from one to two because Zephrath is so important. Um, you basically three, six, eight. You have 11 ways to get the Zephrath. Um, eight additional ways and three actual Zephrath. So, you know, that's a lot of Zephraths right there. Um, and then making your Electrum still gets you your Zephrath. So as you can imagine, I've never struggled with getting to my Zephrath. 
Um, to me, the most important card in this deck is Zafrat. Um, and really, it's Zafranu, but Zafrat's important because he gets you Zafranu and he's a scale. And he allows you to just get instant access to Pendulum Summon your Zafranu. But naturally, the monster you care most about is Zafranu because he's your lifeblood. He is your grind game. He is your... He basically, he wins you all your duels. And then we have uh, three Dragon Shrine and one Foolish Burial to get your Destrudo or your Supreme King engine started. Going second, this is flexible. So I do like that my spells are flexible going first or second, which allowed me to just play through boards. Even Oracle of Zephyr, it helped me in that stun matchup because I just activated this, search Zephyr Saiton, played a scale, normal him, pop, pop, and then just swung for 19 and just played beatdown. Like this guy literally forced me to convert from playing Pendulums to just play beatdown with Zephyr Saiton and kept protecting him from destruction with Zephyr Providence. Searching out little traps like War and uh, Zephyr Divine Strike and continuing to just to grind. And the Zephyr Saiton eventually got me to that point where I just won because of the 19 pokes. Um, so all your spells are flexible. They're all good. Do you see any bad spells? You're always happy if you draw at least one spell and you play, you know, what? How many? Four, six, nine. You play 12 spells and they're all good. And all your monsters are broken. Like, you're never mad if you draw any of your monsters. Uh, they're just really good. You're only mad if you draw, like, literally... Two Ash, two Ogre, and a Droll, right? Like, that's the only time you're ever mad. And that never, ever, ever happened to me before, and it never will. Uh, for traps, two Solemn Strike. Wait, never say never. I will never say never. So we play two Solemn Strikes because we want any Pendulum Mirror Match to be free. And Solemn Strike just pretty much makes it free. Because while they can make Electrum and they can make all these other Q cards, uh, Strike answers to their Pendulum Summon. And they better be able to make Vortex before they Pendulum Summon. And then if they do, and I stop their entire Pendulum Summon, it just says, all right, live off the Vortex. I'm going to kill you next turn. I'm going to set up too much Negates for you to play through. Uh, so Strike is good in that matchup. It's good in a Trickstar matchup. It's good against ABCs. It's good against Lightsworns. It's good against Invoke to Strike either Megaba or Alistair. Um, like Strike is just only bad against uh, True Dracos when they're trying to like tribute spells and just, you know, pop this, right? But it's still powerful because sometimes games two and three, like this happened where they made a spell monster masterpiece because he was scared if I guess board wipes and I just saw him strike them, right? And also striking Maiden because like Maiden was going to search a masterpiece because I know he added Apocalypse off of Pot of Duality. So I strike the Maiden. She couldn't search masterpiece. So strike basically prevented me from having to deal with the masterpiece. So it stopped her from hitting the board. So this trap, whew, only thing I would change is I need to play Solemn Warnings and Judgments just to hit Masterpieces Summon. Then you have two Nine Pillars. Two Divine Strikes and one Zephyr War. We play a lot of back row, fam. Like, we're ready for every deck. This is the only Pendulum deck that can play a lot of hand traps and a lot of traps and still get away with it. Pendulums, naturally, what do they say? If it's not Pendulum skill, it's a bad core. If it's not Pendulum skill, it, it, it's just already a neg. I'm already losing the duel. Negative. Not in Zephyrus, bro. Not in Zephyrus. You can literally just make do off of a Dragon Shrine and a Zephyrath. A Chronograph. And any like a combination of one of your spells and any skill, one spell and any skill, you can make do with that. Like literally, you can just set up your negates, get a Frenui on the field, search another trap, and you're good to go. These I would never cut. Notice how a lot of Zephyr players do one, one, and one. That is totally inaccurate. You must be playing decks that just can't play through more than two negates. Because the decks I've been playing against lately, they can play through two negates. You need to have three, four, or five. And this deck's bare minimum is three, and that's enough to at least to secure another turn for you so you could just OTK. So two, four, six, seven traps. Would I cut any? No. I want to play more. I want to play Judgment and Solemn Warning. That's it for your main deck. Then for your extra, we play uh, two Electrums. Two is correct. You don't need more than two. I do have the third if I ever needed it. Uh, Boreload. Boreload stole two Masterpieces. Boreload helped me to steal Minerva so that I wouldn't have to worry about her, you know, popping any cards on the field. Borlo's just a trump card. Would I ever cut Borlo? No. When you're in a pinch, especially when I go into time, like this deck goes into time a lot in certain matchups because like if they're slow um, and I have to like play at their pace because I'm scared to OTK because they might have like too much back row for me, like, you know, Paleos and like stun decks, like people are playing Inspector Border and um, like True Dracos and stuff like that. Borlo swings the tempo, not swings the tempo, he swings the tide of the game in your favor and he changes the tempo to like, you have to play faster now. Like, you're not going to have too many turns left. So, Borlo's just, mm, 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 good. And then Skull Dread, when I get greedy. Naturally, I summon this card. Um, Like, I only summon it turn one when I know that I already have enough negate. So, like, it doesn't matter what cards I draw. What I'm trying to draw is just, like, one more trap or just a hand trap. So, that's what I'm trying to do. And then games two and three, I always summon this going first. 
because I know people will side um, Lava Golems and Spear Molds because my turn one boards are always like just retarded, like Naruto plus Counter Traps plus like for example uh, Zephyr Nui when you know it, like I have Counter Traps and have Naruto or like Naruto plus Chao Fang and you know the Counter Traps gonna pop Chao Fang. Search a tuner like they see that and they're like we're signing Spear Molds and Lava Golems and you summon this set three back rows and pass and they're like oh crap. This Lava Golem and this Spear Mode in my hand are absolutely dead. So now you're only playing with five cards instead of, you know, the natural six that you would get. And if you draw evenly matched, that's another dead card because I've never, ever, ever lost to evenly matched with this deck. So your four links, pretty strong. Why have I never lost to evenly matched, if you're going to ask? I always negated it. Um, I never, ever got to, like, have evenly matched resolve against me. Um, It just... To me, that's what another thing that I felt was so powerful about this deck, because not only does it not lose to Anti-Spell and D-Barrier, but it never loses to Evenly Match, and Kaijus do, like, nothing. Game 2 and 3, I play smart, because I know people cite Kaijus Lava Golem Spear Mode, so I'm not going to pin them some in Zephyr Nui, for example, and then search out 9 Pillars, because if they Kaiju this monster right here, my 9 Pillars won't be able to resolve, because I no longer control a Yang Zing, so I'll summon him and search Zephyr Divine Strike instead. So, like... This deck doesn't lose to Kaijus, it doesn't lose to Lava Gomes, it doesn't lose to Spear Moles, it doesn't lose to Evenly Match, it doesn't lose to Twin Twisters. Like, you side all these dead cards, and you just lose because you're drawing cards that you can't use. Uh, Chao Fang, got him, got him, baby. And then one Cloud Castle for your level 9 synchros. Um, this card just is an auto win in the Spiral matchup because you can't use Earths, and that's your Super Agent, that's your Helix, that's your Quick Fix. That's like a lot of cards. Then we have Black Rose and Yazi to play through boards going second, to play through barriers, to play through anti-spells. Um, Yazi can't be targeted, and he's just like a boss, so you got to play him. Uh, Black Rose won the game against two Dracos. Um, it's just, you you have an established board, and you flip anti-spell on me, I activate Black Rose. And um, as long as you don't negate the Black Rose, you're going to lose. But if you negate the Black Rose, that's one negate out the way. So it's never a bad card. Like, it's worth the investment. It's worth the slot in your extra deck. And then your trump cards, more trump cards. Like your extra deck is just full of trump cards. This just steals anything you want, really. And um, this draws your hand traps, your lava golems, your kaijus, anything, any monster. Sometimes, you know, like I said, uh, I put astrograph on top of my deck just so I can OTK um, guaranteed. Um, really strong. And then for your XYZs, you just play three. Um, True King of All Chlamydia. I can make this first turn like 80% of the time. I can make this anytime I want. I can make this anytime I want. Uh, it just helps you to not lose to evenly match, even more so. Um, you know, it just helps you to just have more negates on the board. Um, most decks, their starter cards are always spell cards and trap cards um, for Paleos. But most decks, their starter cards are just spell cards. So Naruto's just like, nah, I'm not going to waste my counter trap. I'll use my Naruto instead and use my counter trap on something that matters. Like nine pillars for the purple poison. So it gets shuffled and it can't destroy anything, which... I thought it was so cute. This guy was like, purple poison effect. I'm like, how is it activating if I shuffled it in the deck? He's like, because it's popped. I'm like, for one, if if I if it's popped and gets shuffled to the deck, monster effects can't activate if they're shuffled into the deck anyways. And two, I never destroyed it. I shuffled it. But okay, that's fine. You want to call it, Judge? Uh, and then we have Starving Venom. Uh, he's another trump card. Any monster effect that I don't have access to, he gives me it. I don't play Omega. I can steal Omega. I don't play Totally Awesome. I can copy Totally Awesome. I don't play Purple Poison. I can use this copy Purple Poison, Crash Pop. Um, this this is just anything. It even is Curious. Like in the Lightor matchup, you copy Curious. And then when you send this card, um, this card gets sent. Like let's say you crash it into something. You can add any card you want. Um, I believe. I've never really done it, but I always thought you can do that. But tell me if I'm wrong because I've never copied a Curious. But theoretically speaking, I think this card can copy Curious. If it can't, it can't. But it's still any monster effect that you don't have. Then for your side deck, the only card for siding first is uh, for going first is just D barrier. Um, so your pendulum matchups are even more free than they're supposed to be. Because this deck, it already is going set. It's going first game is just too strong. You don't need a side deck anything for going first because your your deck is just hard built to just win going first. So this is the only card that matters, right? This deck naturally can struggle going second if you can't get like Destroyer Black Rose. Zephyr War, Saiton, Zephyr Thubit. You do have a lot of cards for going second. Even Astro and Chrono help you to play through boards and Cerberus. So I'm not saying that the deck can't play going second, but when you're going second in games two and three and they have too many negates, it's a little bit more difficult. So that's why we side three evenly matched. Uh, we side three Twin Twisters. Uh, shout out to DNA. I got my two supers through uh, store credit and also got these. Where are they at? Got these. 
uh, for my tops. I used, I got 40 in store credit. They were selling these for 12, so I got two of these for 24 and used the other 16 to get uh, some extreme force packs and just some sleeves uh, just because I wanted black sleeves. I'm going to change this deck to black sleeves, but this helped going second against anti spells, uh, barriers against Dracos for their mono, uh, their monarchs erupt, their, you know, skill drains, whatever it is. That's why I side three twin twisters. Um, because naturally, what could beat this deck would be Monarchs Erupt, and I don't want to automatically lose to that. And at the same time, like, against Trick Stars, it forces them to, like, activate their scapegoat and standby. And if they do that, you can actually just go Charge Warrior, attack all their tokens. Uh, so, like, I feel like Twin Twister is just really, really strong. Um, like, there's nothing bad about the card. So, three evenly, three Twin Twisters for going second. Uh, Dark Hole Rageki for going second. Spirit Mode, Lava Golem, Kaijus for going second. Um, you can play just inherently just do three spear mode and zero kaijus. You can do three lava golems and no kaijus, or you can do kaijus and no golems or spear mode. I like to have the versatility, the flexibility, and just have all my options open. So I wanted to play all of them. And why do I play such a low ratio? Why? Three stacks? You'll never draw them. That's not true. That is not true. I did this to somebody multiple times. I've done this where I just literally summon this guy with my field spell, and I stack any one of these four monsters on top of my deck. And then just use it after I draw it. Um, and you just do that purely through Pendulum Summoning. If you Pendulum Summon and you get this off, right? Like, if they don't Solemn Strike, obviously you can Pendulum Summon. Like, they can only negate so many scales. Because naturally, the best Pendulum Magician board has two Speller Trap Negators and one Monster Negator, right? So, you know, you can play through that easily. You just activate this. You go for this. And what you do, you do this purely through Pendulum Summoning. So, you still have your normal Summon for this. Or even against Masterpiece, Draco stuff, you just... Kaiju them. Sometimes Lava Golem matters because like they'll have Masterpiece plus like a Maiden or something. You're just like, alright. Lava Golem, everything. Uh, really, really strong. And then there are other occasions where you're like, oh, I, I want my Kaiju back. Give it back. So, yeah. Really, really strong. Going second. That's it for the side deck, the main deck, the extra deck. Um, this deck is just, it just keeps getting better. I keep getting better with it. I'm learning a lot. And I'm starting to realize this deck is really complicated. It's just like not easy. But... I feel like it's worth it's like um it's not a high risk but it is a high reward and it's definitely worth it when you um take the time to learn how the deck works and kind of just figure out your line of plays um prioritize for your extra deck because this deck can make so many different cards in the extra deck you definitely have to prioritize and pick the best choices um if you notice i don't play vortex and um an absolute because that was two extra deck slots and um what those do is literally what my deck already does but in the form of a spell speed two and i have spell speed threes that do what Vortex does, whereas Naruto is here because it's easier to make because you have so many more level 6 spellcasters, and it's only one slot from your extra deck. With like the Vortex, not only do you have to play Absolute and Vortex, but you have to play Zephyr Metaltron, which none of those cards are bad. I'm not saying they're bad, but I feel like that's three slots out of my extra deck for one play. And um, those three slots could have just been, you know, I can cut this and this, and maybe just cut Black Rose, right? And just be like, all right, Odd Eyes Vortex... Um, Adai's Absolute and Zephyr Metaltron. For these? No, 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 no. These are so much better than those cards. Heck no. Nah. So it's just personal preference. I play Zephyrs different from anybody you'll see. So, like, don't think that this is just, like, how Zephyrs are supposed to be. This is just how I play them. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching the, um, the video. Um, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and just open these packs real quick. We just, we never know what we might pull. Um, and thank you guys so much. Y'all make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Uh, definitely stay tuned for future content and let's see if we pull something that matters no that doesn't matter why well, do i feel like we're gonna get blessed right now what are we gonna get blessed with uh okay we, we didn't get blessed with that all right yeah yeah i pulled too much extreme force i think we're done with this set peace out y'all and i'm definitely gonna be uploading some more videos very very soon um you guys are gonna see how i do at lubbock regionals very soon peace out y'all